Viva Palm Zip Channel System Installation Guide. Before you start, make sure you check the following install requirements. Your roofing structure should have a maximum rafter spacing of 32 inches. Have one other helper by your side. Cut-proof gloves are recommended. For safety, have a strong ladder or scaffolding. Additionally, you will need these specific tools and materials to complete the installation. For tools, cutting tool with aluminum blade, drill or impact driver, tape measure, sharpie, utility knife. For materials, Viva Palm, zip channel, one and a quarter inch number 10 hex washer head self-drilling screw, half inch number 10 hex washer head self-drilling screw, 5 16 inch nut driver bit. Open your box of Viva Synthetic Thatch. Take out a few shingles and loosen the edges. This will create a more natural look for the installation. Once you have laid out several pieces of your zip channel system, it is time to start loading the channels with shingles. Insert thatch from one side only to keep the laps going in the same direction. Have someone hold the aluminum channel while you are sliding the thatch shingle into the channel. Make sure that each following shingle is overlapping on top of the previous one by two inches. Two inches of the last shingle should be hanging out of the channel. A wood purlin must be installed around the bottom perimeter of the structure. The purlin should be one inch to two inches round and will be visible after the thatch is installed. This purlin is necessary to support the bottom layer of thatch, providing linear support and visual consistency around the perimeter of the roof. Before you start lining up your channels, we recommend you measure and mark where the thatch will be placed. We recommend this step to ensure alignment. The extended eave method of installation will give you a thicker, longer, and more premium looking eave style. You will use both field shingles and extended eave shingles. The first course, which is a layer of field shingles, will be installed eight inches above the purlin. When lining up your first aluminum channel, make sure that the far end lines up with the vertical rafter so it can be secured to the rafter. You will need to roll your channel piece before lining it up with your measurement. This keeps the aluminum channel from being visible from the underside and helps make it stronger against high wind conditions. If your aluminum channel ends between two rafters, you will cut off the excess piece with an aluminum blade tool and a box cutter so that the end of the channel ends at the midpoint of the vertical rafter and can be secured. Leave two inches of thatch at the hangoff in order to connect it with the next channel. The next channel will have to line up with the first one. You will start lining it up underneath the extra thatch piece by the rafter, then roll it in. This will keep the thatch from leaking when it rains. Make sure that the overlap is in the same direction as the shingles inserted into the aluminum channel. It is important to note that you will need to leave two inches of thatch hanging out of the aluminum channel in order to connect the next channel to the one you just installed. Use an aluminum cutting tool to cut the extra channel that hangs off of the hips and a box cutter to cut the synthetic thatch. You will do so at an angle that lines up with your structure. This will start the prep for the hip shingle installation. The second course, which is also a layer of field shingles, will be installed five inches below the first layer. The third course that is installed will need to be an aluminum channel with extended eave shingles. The third course will be installed directly below the second course the fourth course will also have an aluminum channel of extended eave shingles and will be installed directly below the course that was just installed, in this case, directly below the third course. The fifth course reverts back to a channel loaded with field shingles and it should be installed directly underneath the fourth course. As shown here, the sixth course will be a channel loaded with field shingles and will be installed back up directly under the first course that was installed. 
with six full layers of shingles and the additional length of the extended eave shingles, the extended eave installation method will provide additional weather protection and a natural looking, luxurious palm thatch roof. It is very important to install wind screws to hold the shingles in place during inclement weather. Insert a wind screw through the right side of the shingle directly into the metal of the channel of the previous course. This is a critical step of the installation process to ensure that the shingles stay intact as they are intended. Screw the wind screws into the aluminum channel of the previous course metal on every shingle on the lower layer. It is important to note that each layer should be offset to prevent leaking. Depending on the roof that you are installing the Viva Zip Channel system on, you need to ensure that each new course or layer is installed so there is an 8 inch or more horizontal offset to prevent leaking. The courses should be layered in a brick pattern so that the seams are offset. Hip shingles are necessary to give most roofs a natural, seamless look. To install hip shingles, line up the bottom edge of the first layer of hip shingle to the bottom edge of the field shingle to ensure a good edge line. The hip shingle may appear to be slightly higher than the bottom edge of the field shingle once it is screwed in. Install a second hip shingle so that the first hip shingles are double stacked. This will provide a more even, continuous look along the eave. The second hips layer should be installed approximately 6 inches above the first layer when stacked. Insert the hip shingle under the field shingle edge, securing it in place with three screws. Repeat these steps as needed until you have reached full coverage. Trim excess shingles as needed to have a smooth, seamless look. Ask a person that is standing on the ground to provide visual assistance Valley thatch installations should only be installed on a valley with a pitch of 412 or greater. The roof needs to have a steep enough pitch to allow the water to drain quickly from the valley. Cut the aluminum channel piece in a 45 degree angle. The two corners should meet, forming a tight corner. Roll the channel when installing to ensure weather protection and a thick eave look to the front of the structure. Warning: Valley installation may vary depending on structure. Ensure that when installing the thatch on the valley, you have a person on the ground to help ensure that each channel is parallel as you start to layer up the thatch. To finish up your installation, you must complete the detailing of the ridge. The ridge uses the same shingle that is used on the hips. Once you get to the ridge of your structure, you will want to place the ridge shingles near you so they are easy to grab and install. Note that when the thatch is installed on the ridge, the thatch will be placed so it runs from the center of the ridge to the edge. Start at each edge of the ridge so the narrow part of the shingle points to the center of the ridge. Each half should be facing the opposite direction from each other. Leave, at most, 8 inches between each shingle. Once you meet in the middle, fold a ridge shingle and overlap it with the shingles facing the opposite direction. This will ensure that the detail of your ridge looks natural and the transition between shingles is seamless. If a ridge intersects with another roof plane, install the last shingle and tuck it underneath the nearest shingle. 